you see that? So because of the uh, load resistance Rl of 1k, I have to find the equivalent resistance here, which is 1k in parallel with 1k. What is 1k in parallel with 1k? 500. So this becomes 500 divided by 500 plus 1k times 10. which is 500 divided by 1,500 times 10, which is how much? What do you get? Get your calculators up. 3.33 volts. Okay, so. What this circuit is showing you is that just because I have a voltage divider circuit that gives me five volts doesn't mean the voltage will be five volts because it's dependent on the resistance value of your RL. And if that resistance value is 1K, that voltage here is gonna drop from five volts to 3.33 volts. So if your cell phone needs five volts to run, and you, you only apply, if you only get 3.33 volts at the cell phone, it's not gonna run properly. It's not going to give you proper performance. You see? So that's what's, what you have to understand, that uh, the resistance here to the uh, voltage divider will affect the, uh, the uh, voltage uh, equivalent uh, that you get in the circuit. So now let's take case three. Case three is the same voltage divider circuit, 1K and 1K, but this time I'm saying that my cell phone, RL, is not 1K, but 10 times that value, 10K. So this is case three. Supposing that the load resistance is N times R2. So now let's calculate V out. V out, same idea. This time, the equivalent resistance here is what? 1K in parallel with 10K. Everybody see that? That the equivalent resistance here, down here is 1K in parallel with 10K, divided by 1K in parallel with 10K plus the 1K, meaning our total. Our total is the parallel combination plus the 1K for R1, all multiplied by 10 volts. So, if that cell phone has a resistance which is 10 times R2, 10 times bigger, what is V out this time? What do you get? 4.7 volts. So I started out with 5 volts. Then I said, let me connect a load. If that load happens to be 1K, the same as R2, I'm not gonna get five volts. I'm going to get only 3.3 volts. But if that load is 10 times 1K, then the voltage is 4.7 volts. Is 4.7 volts pretty close to five volts? It's not five volts, but if it was a cell phone, and if you were applying 4.7 volts to it, then it would probably work pretty good, okay? So this is case three, so this is V out now, 4.7 volts. Close to, we'll say close to five volts. Okay, which is what uh, I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for a V out of five volts. Let's take case four. 
came for is just a little bit of an improvement just to let you uh, see that as this number gets bigger, as RL gets bigger, then what happens is V out becomes closer to 5 volts. So I start out with 1K and 1K, but this time RL is 20 times bigger. Instead of 10 times, let's say it's 20 times bigger. Okay? So then, let's find out the L. Well, same equation. 1K in parallel with 20K divided by 1K in parallel with 20K plus the 1K, right? This is the equivalent here, plus the 1K times 10. What do you get? Four point, four point nine volts. Close to five, isn't it? It's even closer to five than case three. Case three was four point seven. Now it's four point nine. So if this was a cell phone that needed five volts to run, and I'm applying four point nine volts to it, it's going to run much better. Okay. So this is. This is uh, the basics of voltage divider circuits. What you have to keep in mind with voltage divider circuits is you start out with the voltage divider, but the load size matters, okay? And if that load size is small, the same as R2, it's going to be nowhere near the five volts that you need.